Hey Pumpkins, it's me Keisha and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Love and Marriage Huntsville Season 6, Episode 26 Review. The season is finally somewhat winding down. I think we have maybe about four or five more episodes before the reunion. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, Carlos King, when is Love and Marriage DC coming back? It's been a year. Y'all been done filming since before summer like what is going on like come on now get it together we're waiting so we pick up where we left off last week with tiffany arriving at uh stormy's guest house so she can have her sit down with kiki and she brings her son child to make sure she don't get boom bopped in her mouth for (laughs) for talking reckless and kiki says that she outright lied about her coming for Tiffany she was like I didn't come for you I feel like you came for me and Tiffany says that at the spa it felt the other way around like she was coming for her so Kiki was like do you know what Tisha's done to me and Tiffany was like no and Kiki was like well how do you feel it's fair to judge the dynamics of our relationship I never wanted there to be a beef between us you just started saying things to make me look bad and boom bop yep 100% factual like you going off what Tisha said when you don't even know her side of the story you don't even know them for real to be even putting your two cents in and saying what type of person Kiki is you don't know her you know what I'm saying you never really got the chance or the opportunity to get to know her so it's just like simmer down my love sit down so Tiffany was like well why would I want to be friends with someone who lives like that basically saying that like kiki ride it ride it and body about it and kiki was like i don't live like that people start with me and i defend myself so tiffany apologized for being shady and speaking on her character when she doesn't even know her and kiki was like all i'm saying is get to know me for yourself and judge me based off what you see and i was like go ahead on kiki i love the way she handled herself she spoke very uh intellectually and precise she didn't miss her words but she didn't curse her or raise her voice she handled that really really well and put tiffany in her place because you think you know so much and don't know nothing and you look like a fool period coming in there with one shoe on and one shoe off where did the other shoe go girl (laughs) like what is happening so then we see chris visit martell at his new house and he got on glasses. Martel got on glasses because he said he got some eye work done. But then the job peep when they were sitting in the kitchen and Martel was sitting up on the counter, he had on these socks. I don't know if they were socks, but his toes were out. It looked like he, you know how you sprain your ankle and you get your leg, your, your foot wrapped. That's what it looked like. So I couldn't tell if it was a pair of socks or his feet were wrapped. But both of his toes were sitting out and I was, and they was like this, <laughs> his toes were sitting out like, like this. It was like, nigga, put them up. We don't need to see that. Like what is happening? I did not know what was going on. I was like, did he didn't got beat up by Arion or something? Like what is going on? Or did Sheree come over there and DDT him? Like what is happening? So Chris asked, you know, what happened between him and Neil? And Martel was like, your wife, she be, uh your wife he because you know he don't know how to speak correct english so forgive me that i'm messing up because i can't talk the way he talks but martel says your wife she do be disrespectful at times you see how hard that was to say because it it was so broken um so chris was you could like like being very contemplative like okay he trying it and he trying me but i'm not gonna you know act up so Chris was like truthful or disrespectful. And Martel was like, I would say disrespectful. I'm not for a woman overly disrespecting a man. Like I'm going to check her if she being disrespectful to me beyond measure. Who the fuck are you, first of all? Who the fuck are you? You were sitting over there squatting in somebody's house for eight months. I don't think that nothing about you is a man. Nothing about you is a man. You can't handle your business. You can't handle your family. You can't keep your pita weed in your pants. You can't keep a job. <laughs> like, what about you makes a man? You're a liar. You're a manipulator. Like, you're verbally abusive to women. You know what I'm saying? Like, boy, when I see a man, I'll speak to a man accordingly. How about that? So, 
Chris, you could tell, is real agitated but not trying to turn up. And Chris was like, I'm just trying to make sure it's not bothersome for either of you. You come talk to me, not her. And uh, Chris was like, um, well, before I even go to the next part, the way Martell was talking to Chris, basically saying, I don't care if she your wife, if I feel like she out of line, I'm going to check her. I felt like Chris should have put him in his place a little bit firmer than that because it was given like you letting him disrespect not only y'all friendship but your wife and know you not going to talk to my wife in any type of way. If you got an issue with her, come to me. I feel like he should have been more firmer with what he had to say and not be so lackadaisical about it. You know what I'm saying? Even though he did say, from now on, talk to me, don't talk to her. But it was kind of a little bit too lackadaisical. But then again, people like that are the crazy ones. That are, before you know it, then slit your throat and you did, <laughs> didn't even see it coming. So maybe he a silent but deadly type person. So then Chris brings up Melody and uh, Melody's name changed because he... Martell called her Melody Holden. He was like, uh, Melody Rogers. And so Martell rolled his eyes and says that, yeah, y'all went, so y'all picked the side. Like, once again, you want to call yourself a man, but you sitting up here talking about picking sides. Like, girl, grow up. Look, girl, grow up. So Chris was like, ain't nobody picking no sides. It's the Rogers over here and the Holtz over here, and we still in the middle. Ain't nobody picking no sides. And in his confessional, uh martell gonna talk about some she uh uh i don't know why she changed her last name like that name that like that name was any good in the first place boy don't nobody want to be no hope boy bye and so then he gonna say to chris that she doing things for clout to try and destroy him how is her changing her last name destroying you you should be happy she don't want your last name no more. Like, she is making it very clear for whoever you get with next that you are Mrs. Holt. Not me, okay? Not I, okay? Like, everything goes back to Martell and his narcissistic ways thinking everything is about him. You over there with uh, toeless socks on. <laughs> Just broke down. Don't nobody want that last name. So Kim and Tisha go get a vaginal steam together. And I love Tisha's hair. I love when Tisha wears her own hair. I love that she had her hair half up, half down. It looked so cute on her. I wish she would wear her own hair more. So Tisha thinks she pregnant child. And Kiki like, girl, if you don't get out of here with that foolishness, because you know your husband had a vasectomy, so how you pregnant? And Tisha was like, well, maybe it didn't work or whatever. She thinks that she pregnant because she gained weight and she been tired and all of this stuff. So she take the pregnancy test, and of course it is negative. Like, Tisha, please, get somewhere to sit down. So Tisha feels like uh, Mel was blaming her for the Kiki situation um, because she kept on bringing it up and, you know, saying this and saying that. And Kimmy tells her that Mel actually thought that she had an issue with her, how she reacted when they had the group meeting about the expo. And Tisha was like, it ain't got nothing to do with her. I just got so much going on. I've been thinking about maybe I should just be a stay at home mom because it's hard and I'm dealing with a lot. And I find myself yelling at my kids even more. And even more so suggested that we should do marriage counseling and Kiki like, I mean, not Kiki. Kimmy is like, Marceau think that y'all should do marriage counseling? Oh, yeah, it is a little bad over there. Like, what is going on? And I can see her being overwhelmed because they do have a lot going on. She do got the kids. She got the businesses. She's filming for the show. And God knows whatever else she got going on. But um, this is what being a, a working mom, a working wife is. It's, it's, it's not easy. It is hard work. You know what I'm saying? But I just honestly think that it's an issue where she's not getting the support that she needs. And that's just how I feel. And by support, I mean from her husband. So we then see Chris at his office talking to his son, Chris Jr. He was so cute. He a little cute, little funny looking little boy. And they talk about the dinner from hell. And Chris Jr. has not talked to his mama in weeks over the situation with the dogs. He want his dogs back, but... Chris is like, dude, we got you out of jail. We had to take care of your dog 
go to the vet, do all of this stuff until you give us back our money. No, we're not giving you these dogs back. That's just, how do you, how do you think that that's unfair? Like make it make sense. Like it don't. So, um, Chris Jr. says that he stays to himself to avoid criticism because he feel like everybody always got something to say about how he living his life and he just trying to, you know, get his life together and work and do whatever. And so his dad was like, well, what is your go-to? Because you don't come to us. Like, how do you get your release? How do you, you know, figure this stuff out? And his son says that he drives somewhere. I couldn't understand what that child was saying because of his accent. But he says that he drives somewhere in the middle of the night because he can't sleep just to decompress and clear his mind. And Chris gets upset and emotional as any parent and starts to cry and says that he thinks that his son is depressed. And he was like, if you ever need anything, know that I'm here. Like, come talk to me. Like, we got to fix this. And, uh... The son says, you know, I might consider counseling. And that just really hit home, hard home for me because I've gone through the same thing with my own child. You know what I'm saying? So I was very sympathetic to what Chris was feeling, his reaction to his son. And hopefully they can make it through this because depression ain't no joke. You know what I'm saying? But I do just feel like this generation with our children are, I don't want to say weak, but they're very easily offended and heard and coddled. And I think it's our fault because we work so hard so they don't have to struggle when I think that we kind of took away some of the grit that they need to make it through life. Whew, child. Um, and then at the end of the episode, Tiffany and Louie decide that they're going to take a step back from the show. Woo-wee! Hooray, 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 hooray. We have gotten our wish. They are off the show. Goodbye. Get out of here, okay? Yay. So hopefully next season we will see them focus more on the Fletchers and they family because the Fletchers family was everything, honey. I was like, why y'all wait until the dog end of the season to bring them in? But yes, the Fletchers need to be the new uh, couple on the show, you know, Tiffany and Louie, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it was good while it lasted, but yeah, it's time for them to go, they house was pissing me off, every time they filmed in that mausoleum, they called the house, it made me mad, but yeah, I'm not really sad to see them go, so I now hopefully they get their uh, house together, and they marriage together, child, but yeah, um, overall, I'm gonna give this week's episode of Love and Marriage Huntsville a C plus. It was another kind of like filler episode, but it did have some touching and poignant moments. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe and hit that notification bell button. I love you guys and I'll see you on the next video. Bye.